OK, so that's the basics of how to actually read in input. So let's say that now I want to actually sort it. Well, there's three different ones that we're going to look at. The first is bubble sort. So if we go look at how bubble sort works, so this isn't a demonstration of it using cards. So the idea with bubble sort is you're actually going to look at two numbers, the first two. Whichever one is larger goes to the right. So notice that he's comparing two numbers at a time. The larger one always goes to the right as he's going through the list. The queen is now the largest. Keeps going through, keeps going through. And so you walk through your entire list, always moving, comparing each pair of numbers and moving the larger one to the right, if it's not already. Once you get done with one of them, you go through the list again, comparing each pair. And if you think about it, so the first time we went through the entire list, we actually found the largest number. So to find the next largest number, we have to go through the list again. And then the next largest number, go through the list again. So if we're going to have 10 numbers we're looking through, you have to go through the list 10 times. If we have 100 numbers, we're going to walk through the list 100 times. So if you think about it, if you consider the number of uh, things you're looking at to be n, you're going to have to make n comparisons n times, so n squared. So bubble sort is something called an n squared algorithm. So it's how it takes a long time to go through. It, it will sort everything, like it's guaranteed to get everything right, assuming you've done it right. It's just a little slow. All right, so that's bubble sort. So how do we do that? Well, I need to actually read in what kind of sort I'm going to use. It's very similar to this stuff up here, except instead of entering a number for an input file, I need to find out which sort I'm going to use. So let's go down here, enter a number for the sort you want to use. One. Hey, I forgot a space up here. Uh, will be bubble sort. Two will be selection. And three will be table. And I am not going to use four, so I should make sure that I don't say that. All right, so reading in the number, one, two, three, one, two, three. Once I have that, the next thing I actually need to do is make sure that I basically do bubble sort or selection sort or table sort. So if input equals dot equals, because it's a string. I'm going to create functions to deal with this. So I'm going to have one which is bubble sort, one which is uh, selection sort, one which is table sort. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it my input array and then assign, have it sorted on the other side, and then hand it back. So bubble sort input array. It's like, hey, bubble sort, what are you talking about? I know what that means. So I need to actually create the method down here. I'm going to be handing back an int array. I guess I could say public. It's going to be handing in an int array. Um, I'm just going to call it array in here. And then I'm going to be returning some sort of output. I think I'm actually going to sort it in place for this guy. So I'll just return the array after I've moved all the numbers around. OK, so I need to go through my entire list and compare each pair of numbers, starting with the first. That sounds strangely like a for loop. And in fact, it is a for loop. So I'm going to start with the zero thing. I need to keep going. Because I'm comparing each pair of numbers, I want to go one less than the size of my array. So I compare whatever the i is. 
and see if it's greater than the one to the right of it, i plus 1. I should put in some comments here. So compare each pair of numbers and move the larger to the right. So if the one on the left is larger, swap. So how do I swap numbers? So it might be tempting to do something like this, array i equals array i plus 1, and then array i plus 1 equals array i. That won't work, though. What will happen is this number will overwrite this one, and now we've lost what was originally in array i. So we actually need a temporary variable that holds on to this. And then once we have actually moved it, something over array i, we actually use temp here. So you actually need three things in order to do a swap. So that will do it once, and it'll walk down the entire list. The problem is we need this to happen for the number of numbers. And the clever amongst you will notice that there's a, this is not quite as efficient as it could be. There's actually, we could actually stop slightly earlier, but I'll leave that to you to figure out. And also, we don't necessarily need to go to the very end of the list on this. Anyway, um, this will hopefully return a sorted array, and I will be able to print that out. So while I'm here, let's go ahead and do a quick for loop that goes through input array and just prints it out to the command line just to make sure that this will, is actually working. Uh, input array i. So we're going to read in one. Let's do bubble sort. All right, that looks pretty sorted to me. So it printed it all out in the random order, and then we get down to the bubble, and it prints it out in order. Cool. All right, so what about selection sort? What is that? Well, selection sort, instead of going through and comparing each pair, you walk through the entire list and find the next largest or the next smallest, depending on the way you want to do it, and then just pick that out. So let's see, which one is the smallest? That's the two. Which one is the next smallest? It's the three. Next smallest is the four. So the idea is that you're walking through the list looking for the next one in your list. Now, this doesn't mean that you actually need another array, which you copy the original into. Um, or if you copy it in place, the other way to do it is that you basically use the beginning of your list and just swap numbers with the next one in. Um, this one is slightly faster. It Technically, still, you're walking through the entire list the number of times you have numbers. But it's faster because you're not swapping over and over again unnecessarily. 